The problem here on the Bitcoin chart is that this was a very defined bearish pattern and now you're below it. So that is problematic. Hello everyone. Today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about the recent AMC stock crash, crypto, Bitcoin, and stock market price predictions. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell sharply Monday, in its worst day since June, as the summer rally fizzled out and fears of aggressive interest rate hikes returned to Wall Street. The Dow fell 643.13 points, or 1.91%, to 33,063.61. The S&P 500 dropped 2.14% to 4,137.99, and the Nasdaq Composite tumbled 2.55% to 12,381.57, respectively. It was the worst day of trading since June 16 for the Dow and the S&P 500. Those losses come on the back of a losing week, which snapped a four-week winning streak for the S&P 500. Still, the broader market index remains about 13% above its June lows. AMC Entertainment stock is trading sharply lower in U.S. per market price action today. Other meme stocks including GameStop, Bed Bath and & Beyond, and Sundial Growers are also trading lower. Bitcoin starts a new week fresh from a new multi-week low amid a return of highly nervous sentiment. After dipping below $21,000 over the weekend, the largest cryptocurrency is consolidating around 10% lower than a week ago, and the fear across crypto markets is clearly visible. Yeah, so I mean, it's a nasty collapse. And, and I think the biggest thing to understand here is that this is this is all about human psychology, right? So in 2021, we saw stocks like GameStop, AMC, Bed Bath Beyond soar to ridiculous heights and then come back in. And what we've seen here is that it's the Wall Street bets crowd has tried to relive the magic of 2021. So they've started to pump these things. They started to run. We saw them go up precipitously, but not as high as 2021. And they've come crashing in so, so fast. This is the psychological part of it, is that you have number one, the same investors that were in last time, they got burned when the collapse occurred, so they're much quicker to pull the trigger. Last year, you had months of people saying, hey, I'm never going to sell. I'm going to hold on. You had the apes. You had all the, I mean, there's all of these things going on, right? And ultimately, that is no longer intact because human psychology remembers the collapse and people are selling into it. The last thing to remember is that this was inevitable because the Fed in 2021 was printing money, the government was sending checks, all these things, the Fed was basically leaving interest rates at zero or near the, near the zero marker, and that helped these stocks run. Now you have a totally different scenario, you're in a bear market, and that means that these stocks did not have the same flight that they would have last year. So. Not surprising to see the collapse. I hope too, not too many people got burned on this, but nonetheless, it is scary the falls that these things have had. You're going to end up losing, especially when it's the herd mentality. Um, the smart money gets in at the beginning of the run, the dumb money later on, and you never want to be in that crowd that's chasing at the end. So avoid the hype, essentially. I want to just touch on something that I think is important here. If you were trading AMC and you got caught up in the hype, and let's suppose you were trading on rumors that it was gonna get squeezed because you were following the Wall Street Bets group and you started trading sometime in early August. At what point should you start looking at the charts and decide to sell? I mean, that huge run up, did it give, if you just isolated that vertical jump from uh, that pointer that you, were just, uh, that you just had all the right. way to the top, at any point during that climb, did that chart indicate to you a definitive sell pattern? Yeah, so so number one, look at the 200 moving average here. And this is the key, folks, is that if you're in these trades, that's all fine and good. And if you're in the money, there's no reason you have to get all the way out. But what you want to do is you want to play it smart. You want to take a little bit off the table. As you hit a resistance line, take a little bit off. When you hit the next one, take a little bit off. So in this situation, at the 200 moving average, that would have been smart to take a little bit off the table. And then you can let the rest run. And then what I want to show you here, and again, I'm just, I'm just looking at this, but, but look at this trend line here. I mean, really, you had a great trend line 
connecting these highs and really right around there is where you saw it stall out. So the 200 MA right here, you just kind of take a little bit off. And what we, we say, you know, in, in the crypto markets, it's called a moon bag where it's kind of all just the profit at that point. That's fine if you want to leave that on, on the table. I don't like to do it myself because I like putting money and banking it. But again, at least in that scenario, you're taking some off the table, taking a little bit more and you're lowering your risk as these stocks get more into ludicrous levels. So, so what we saw is Friday when the equity market sold off, you got this nasty candle. It did close below this channel. So look at the beauty of this channel here, how we've been hovering up and down inside of it really since June. But the negative here is that we saw a close below. Now you haven't confirmed, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very nasty little pattern formation. And it's likely we're gonna go retest this yellow trend line here, which happens to be the high from 2017 right here. That's gonna be a big line in the sand. If we break that, then you see that move down that I've been calling for as my secondary target. You know, my first target was 20,000. We talked about it last year in Dubai when, when I was there in, in October, 2021, we said 20,000. Now I say it's gonna actually go lower than that. Next stop is gonna be 12 to 13,000. So we are headed lower and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a rough road along the ways here. Uh, right. CEO of Galaxy, he's uh, a couple weeks ago, he made headlines by saying that he still thinks Bitcoin's long-term projection or potential is $500,000 a coin. And if you're of the view yeah. that Bitcoin will eventually hit half a million dollars a coin, I'm not saying will, I'm just quoting Mike here. You know, if you agree with Novogratz, then what's the difference? $20,000, $12,000, your buy-in at this yeah. point doesn't really make a difference if you think of it that way. Right. And, and, and to be fair, that he's, he's correct on that. And, and I actually have that same long term view. I'm a big long term bull. I'm just a shorter term macro and you know, macro economist looking at the cycles and everything like that. So the beauty of 12 to 13,000, it gets us to that 80 to 85 percent correction that Bitcoin has done every single cycle. Uh, so that kind of gives us a basis of what to look for. It's also a strong technical support. But you're right. I mean, if you're a long term investor and you're not going to look at it for 10 years or five years, there's nothing wrong with that you just have to this is the key right you have to be able to weather the emotional storm because i know a lot of investors out there they might buy in at 22 or 21 and when they're down 40 percent at 12 they might panic and unload because you're going to hear a lot of negativity out there and if you you have to be able to control that and, and shut it out and then you're okay to do that but if you're someone who's very emotional and you're going to exit the trade at that point and then it goes to fifty thousand, then a hundred thousand that's not a good scenario for you to be in. So, well, that's a good question. I, I don't think so, not at this stage of Bitcoin's life cycle. I think down the line, you will see a, a kind of a difference and, and Bitcoin and the crypto market start to emerge. But right now it is tied to a risk asset. I know a lot of people said in 2021, oh, it has nothing to do with the stock market. It'll go up when inflation goes up and the markets sell off. We obviously learned that that wasn't the case. So I'm in the camp that we're gonna see uh, crypto sell off with the stock market. I have a big downside move coming later this year in the stock market. Market, and that's going to be the catalyst to really take us to that 12, 13,000 marker on Bitcoin. And I actually think that Ethereum is very likely going to head down to this next target around $6, $645. So I have it priced in. That should be the, the level that Ethereum hits when Bitcoin hits 12 to 13,000. How did you come up with that yellow line? Uh, key major support. It was the beginning of the big bull market. This would be 100% retrace to the start of that bull market. Major support right here as well. Just like Bitcoin, like if we go to the Bitcoin chart, you can see here, we haven't even come close to the 200 on Bitcoin, which is kind of sad just to think, right? I mean, it hasn't even come close at all, but you can see right here, it did hit the 200 before that next cycle to the downside. The problem here on the Bitcoin chart is that this was a very defined bearish pattern and now you're below it. So that is problematic. Now, again, we have to hold this 19.6, 19.5 level, which is that key level from 2017. Otherwise, again, we should be heading very, very quickly. And again, just watch the stock market. I strongly encourage everyone to just keep an eye on the stock market. That is going to be your indicator. If this continues and we continue to see this fall on, on the S&P, I don't believe that the crypto markets can withstand that. Yeah, so this is this is again a fear of the Fed not loose or not not backing off. We got the minutes last week from the Federal Reserve meeting that kind of was the end of the move. Right into those minutes are when we touched the 200 moving average, which was the technical resistance level. And then as soon as we heard from the Fed, it didn't seem as they were as they were as dovish 
as the market wanted. And we've seen the dollar just soar here. Take a look at the at DXY chart. Let me punch that in here. And we've seen the dollar basically up to a double top up here. But look at the run on the dollar basically since that move from the Fed or since the, the minutes came out. And that is putting major pressure. The, the stock market does not like a strong dollar. It wants a stable or slightly weaker dollar. And that again is problematic here for the market. So as long as the dollar is going higher, it's telling you that again, investors are, are moving away from stocks. And that's why we're seeing the selling that we're seeing. That's interesting. Why do, you, why do you say that the stock markets don't like a stronger dollar? If you look at the S&P 500, for example, most of the companies are export oriented or have most of the revenues from overseas. Wouldn't a stronger dollar actually help their top line? No, it's, it's actually the opposite, right? So, so if, you, if you sell in terms of yen or euros and then you convert it back, right? So you're taking in yen or euros and between that period of the conversion back into dollars, the dollar strengthens. So you're actually getting less out of it. And we've okay. seen even stocks like IBM, companies like IBM, they took a $3 billion hit because of the currency issues here. So, so it's kind of wacky how that's working right now, but it, it is definitely a headwind. And I think it's important to understand what does a strong dollar mean? It means people are going into the US dollar for safety. And what they're doing here is they're saying, all right, the Fed is gonna drive us into recession and therefore, and they're not lightening up, even though we know the economy is weakening per economic data. And so they're hiding in the dollar, they're selling risk assets that might be affected by a weaker economy. And that again is a, is a kind of an issue that the markets are very freaked out about right now. But to me, I see, I see further downside in Bitcoin. I think that the stock market is going to make new lows this year. And again, that's saying something because we've had a huge bounce on the S&P. So by end of year, I'm actually saying that we will take out these lows down here okay. at around 3,600 on the S&P, 3,500. And we actually should go even lower than that. So it's going to get nasty towards the end of the year as the economy or as, as investors start to recognize that the Fed is not going to come to the rescue of a recession. I think the next jobs number is going to be a lot weaker. We're going to start to see that weakness filtering into the jobs number, which is a, a kind of a delayed reaction, as we know, economically. And that is going to make the markets very, very scared with inflation not coming down even more. New low. So you're saying the bear market is back from summer vacation. We're not going to yeah, see. And not only that, but I'll even even make a bolder call for you today. Okay. I say that the stock market has made the highs of 2021. We will not take those highs out for five to 10 years. Five to 10 years. What is your rationale for uh, a stock market that's not going to uh, reach new all time highs? That has to be based on some sort of fundamental analysis as well, then. Yes, correct, correct. So it's technical and fundamental. Uh, the fundamental side is basically that you're going to have this genie that's out of the bottle named inflation. It's not going to go back to 2% or under for a long, long time. That's going to mean that the Federal Reserve is not going to be able to print us out of the future recessions that are going to come, especially this next one. And therefore, you're going to have this market and this economy economy that's mired in more of a stagflation period. So slightly higher inflation, but really no growth to speak of. And it's going to last for years because remember, the Fed has printed us out of every recession, probably for the last 20 years at this point. And they've pulled forward so much of the gains. If we go to the daily chart, I mean, I mean in fact, let's go to the monthly chart. Look at the monthly chart on the SPY here, the S&P 500. This is basically, here's 2009. This is the Fed printing of money. Does that look normal to anyone? It is ridiculous. They were pulling forward so much of the upside in this market. It's gonna take us at least 10 years to digest. The only other thing that was semi like this was in the, is the QQQ going back to 2000 when we had that same vertical move. Well, guess what? It took over 10 years for the NASDAQ to break through those highs. So you're going to have this digestion period. I think what we're going to go through is much like what the Chinese market, the Shanghai and the uh, Hang Seng has gone through and the Brazilian stock market, which are both my favorite areas to invest right now. Here you have the monthly chart. The Hang Seng currently is still trading at levels that were seen back in 2006 and close to levels seen in the 2000s. So if you look at that, the high of 2000, we basically just touched it on the Hang Seng market right here. This has been mired in a sideways chop move for the last really 10 to 20 years. The US markets, first of all, look at the vertical move that occurred here and from 2003 to 2007, it's almost a replication 
of what we've seen in the U.S. markets and look at how long it's taken to digest that move from the Hang Seng. And if we go to the EWZ, much the same thing here. Look at that chart, 2003 and the vertical move up to 2008 and look at the digestion. I think you're going to get a breakout on the Brazilian stock market, a breakout on the Hang Seng and the U.S. markets will now go into that same sort of longer term consolidation pattern that we've seen in these markets for the last 10, 20 years. Even as exchanges see an acceleration in BTC leaving their books, the overall picture is now firmly one of fear when it comes to Bitcoin and altcoin investors. According to the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which uses a basket of factors to give a normalized score for market sentiment, extreme fear is just a step away. At 29 over 100, the index is 4 points off a return to its extreme fear bracket, having hit 27 over 100 over the weekend. The latter represents a drop of 40% in a single week. Seven days prior, the index was at 45 over 100, recording its most optimistic levels since April. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.